Most people in the Bay Area know about the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. And they know about the 1906 earthquake and fire. But the 1868 earthquake was so long ago, and so our memory of that has really faded over time. On the morning of the 21st of October, in the year 1868, happened one of the most terrifying calamities that has ever visited the coast of California. At seven minutes to eight o'clock, a violent trembling and shaking of the earth occurred. They called it the Great San Francisco Earthquake, but it predated the 1906 quake by more than 30 years. The earthquake of 1868 was absolutely devastating. Let us fervently hope that we have seen and felt the last of this earthquake. Charles E. Miller, October 24th, 1868. When the shaking stopped, which was estimated at a magnitude 7.0, 30 people were dead and hundreds of buildings were wrecked. The strongest shaking was in the East Bay towns of Hayward, San Leandro, and Fremont. Luckily, these were sparsely populated areas at the time. In 1868, the entire population of the East Bay was about 24,000 people. About half of those people lived in Oakland. Cities like San Leandro Hayward had about 500 people. But now, of course, we have over two and a half million people that live within a strong throw of the Hayward Fault. A lesser known cousin of the San Andreas Fault, the Hayward Fault is a crack in the Earth's crust up to 20 miles deep that stretches roughly 40 miles from San Pablo Bay in the north to Fremont and Milpitas at its southernmost end. It is constantly moving, little amounts every year. The problem is it's not moving enough. And so uh, we still have big earthquakes on the Hayward Fault to make up the difference. The Hayward Fault, like the San Andreas, sits atop the boundaries between the North American and Pacific plates, sheets of the Earth's surface which are constantly grinding past each other. Over time, some underground areas along the fault lock, increasing tension. Eventually, when the stresses become too great, the fault slips, releasing energy in the form of underground seismic waves. Those waves produce the shaking we experience as an earthquake. I'm walking along the Hayward Fault, and here is the offset caused by the fault on this curb. Jim Kemper is a geophysicist with the U.S. Geological Survey in Menlo Park. His specialty is paleoseismology, which means that he studies ancient earthquake ruptures. Kemper and others on the USGS team dig trenches across earthquake faults. Peering into tectonic time, they find evidence of fossil earthquakes which they radiocarbon date to determine the magnitudes and dates. It's only in this deep trench that we're able to get back uh, older in time. So 2,000 years ago, we're looking right around here at the time of the Romans. Along the Hayward Fault, we have dug one trench very close to the Fremont Bart stop. At that site, we have evidence for 12 earthquakes in a single trench. The most interesting thing we have found is the rate of earthquakes has been fairly regular over the last 2,000 years. Not only is it regular, it's due. Their data have shown that a major quake on the Hayward Fault has occurred roughly every 140 years for the last 2,000 years. The 140-year deadline came and went in 2008. So now we're officially overdue for another big one. A USGS study in 2015 concluded there is a 72% probability that a magnitude 6.7 or larger earthquake will occur in the next 30 years on one of the Bay Area's seven faults. So. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Probably the most dangerous fault in the United States is the Hayward Fault right here in the Bay Area. And that's because it has the potential for very large earthquakes and it runs right through a very built up area. And when it goes off, the lives of seven million people who live and work in the Bay Area will change in a matter of seconds. Roadways will be shut down. 
the soft, sandy deposits along the margin of the bay where we have airports, approaches to bridges, they're likely to liquefy, ripping apart the roads. So I think we can assume transportation networks will be completely disrupted and destroyed. Water will likely be shut down. There will be fires because gas lines will rupture. There won't be enough water to fight the fires. Power will be down. And if that's not enough to get your attention, recent findings by the USGS indicate that a rupture on the Hayward Fault could continue on to the Calaveras Fault, which runs east of downtown San Jose. The maximum earthquake we could have if the entire Hayward Fault ruptured is about magnitude 7.1. But then if you add an earthquake that would continue on to the Calaveras Fault, you could get a substantially larger earthquake, maybe about 7.4, which would have devastating impact across the region. To put that in perspective, the total economic damage after Hurricane Katrina was about $125 billion. Scientists are projecting more than $170 billion worth of damage from a magnitude 7 event on the Hayward Fault. And after the Earth stops shaking, at least 200,000 people will be left homeless. I often say it'd be a lot like Katrina, but here we'd be speaking 150 languages as well. These old houses were built by Norwegians, by Spanish, by different Europeans, and they're all done differently. Howard Cook, owner of Bay Area Retrofit, is trying to avert at least some of the impending devastation by preaching the benefits of strengthening your home. Probably 25% of the houses in the East Bay have been retrofitted, and I would guess that 95% have been done incorrectly. There are no seismic retrofit codes that work. There are some guidelines, but they don't apply to any of the houses we see. In 2008, a massive 7.9 earthquake struck Sichuan province in China. At least 70,000 people were killed and five million more were left homeless when 80% of the buildings in the region nearest the fault were destroyed. Although most of the structures in the Bay Area have significantly more integrity than those in rural China, the damage caused by a moderate to large earthquake on the Hayward Fault would still be devastating to the built environment. That's why engineers at UC Berkeley's Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Center in Richmond have been testing buildings on their 20 by 20 foot shake table for decades. The unique thing about the uh, UC Berkeley shake table is it's a three axis shake table. So it can be moved in three directions, not only translation, but also rotation. As a structural engineer at the lab, Khalid Musalam has been involved with shaking up a wide range of structures, like brick walls, wooden buildings, and steel bridge piers. Most of the tests that we have done on the shaking table have led to improvement in the design. Uh, whether it's improvement in the design of components of a building, improvement of the design of entire structure by understanding how they behave, uh, and more importantly, improvement in the retrofit of the existing built environment. Scientists are understanding more and more about the Bay Area's seismic quirks and how to build structures that can cope with them. So for Tom Broker, the next step is getting the word out. Well, you know, preparing for an earthquake is really everyone's job. We can have a kit so that we can survive for three days after an earthquake. Government needs to do their job. They need to be prepared so they can respond to the earthquake. How quickly we recover from the earthquake, it's really determined by how well we've planned in advance for the earthquake and how well we've prepared for it.